Hello YouTube people and welcome to the ultimate notebook undervolting guide. Now why do I do undervolt your laptop? Well, a couple reasons. Performance and power consumption. So you can gain up to 20% uh, performance by performing some undervolting on a Intel NVIDIA notebook combination and power usage while still achieving 20% performance increase can go down 30%. So pretty amazing stuff here. So in my use case, I was able to go from 77 frames per second to 93 frames per second in a repeatable benchmark. It's a 20% gain. And my power usage, I was able to go from a 92 watt average while running that benchmark to 71 watts average. So a 30% reduction in power. So uh, let's talk about the necessary software that you'll need to do this. Uh, first up, you'll need for the CPU undervolting process a program called Throttle Stop. We'll be using uh, version 8.74 of this. And for the GPU, we'll need MSI Afterburner. We'll be using version 4.6.2 in this guide. And we'll also be using the Unigen Valley Benchmark. And I'm going to make this super quick and dirty to start with. That means we're going to talk over exactly what you need to do in the software to achieve your undervolt. Um, once we do that, and I don't want to waste your time, so I'll be putting uh, timestamps on every single section of this, but very first, we're just going to show you, here's what you click, and here's how much performance you can get. Um, and then once that's done, we'll get into all the nitty gritty. So first I'll show you how to do it quickly, and then we'll go into an in-depth throttle stop explanation, afterburner setter settings, modern GPU undervolting theory, and how to further limit power to your CPU and GPU. I will also include some thermal imaging shots. So uh, my test subject here is the Lenovo C940 15 inch version with GeForce GTX 1650 graphics. It has an i7-9750H CPU. And this guide should work with any 7th, 8th, 9th, and potentially 10th gen CPUs, um, and also pretty much any modern NVIDIA GTX uh, graphics card. It won't work with, uh, this guide won't work with Radeon or Intel graphics card. So let's get started. Uh, I have both those two pieces of software open so we can see what we need to do. First things first, in throttle stop, you're going to go to FIVR, which is the voltage regulation section, and you're going to select CPU core and unlock that adjustable voltage. Now, uh, you may want to start at something like 80 millivolts, but I'm going to go straight to 100 because I know that uh, this machine can handle that. And I'm also going to go to the CPU cache, unlock its voltage, and reduce it by 100 as well. Okay, once you've done that, click Apply, have it set to save voltages immediately, and click OK. Now you've successfully undervolted your processor. And we'll get into the nitty gritty of why that's important uh, in, in a little bit. But first of all, let's see how to do the full guide. So uh, let's look over here. Uh, now we're going to undervolt the GPU. So once you open up MSI Afterburner, the first thing you're going to do is go into the settings and unlock the voltage control and the voltage monitoring. Now on a notebook, it may not actually show those values, but uh, it could be important for it to setting the right values. Uh, one thing we're going to do is up the memory clock. So you can see that this particular GPU is stock at 3,500 megahertz. Um, you can actually bump this up so it gets somewhere in the range of 4,500 megahertz. This is GDDR5, and it actually can handle that pretty readily on this machine. So I'm going to actually bump that up 1,000 and set it to 4,500. Now, if your memory is already at 4,000, you may only want to bump the memory clock by 500 megahertz. So uh, you start getting to hairy territory on GDDR5 above 4,500, but you could maybe hit 4,700, but you'd want to vet that first. So anyways, uh, 
get this up to about 4,500, that kind of gets you a free boost in memory bandwidth, which will improve performance. And the next thing we're going to do is change the undervolting profile. So to do this, you're going to hit Control F, Control F. And then it's going to bring you to the voltage frequency curve editor. There's an OC scanner. It looks complicated, but all you have to click here is OC scanner. And once you're here, you're just going to hit the scan button. And when you scan that, it will take about 20 minutes and it will basically find at what maximum clock you can have for a certain level of voltage. And basically what that does is it lets your uh, video card operate way more efficiently than it could normally, where it's just kind of saying, hey, I'm going to be super conservative here and just pump the voltage uh, as needed. So you'll hit scan, let it run for 20 minutes. Once it finishes successfully, uh, you can close that. And then the very important thing to do is after it's it's done that, you will need to hit this check mark. Um, so that you'll be able to hit apply once you've run that. And I already have done that, so I'm gonna load a profile uh, that I have already that happened once I ran my scan. So you can see that that's what we have. And it could be a good idea to, to open that OC scanner back up and test this. And it will just verify, yep, those are good settings and you're good to go. So um, anyways, I am going to bump that back up to 1000 and I'm going to hit apply. And that applied my undervolting curve. So now we're ready to go. We can run the benchmark and see how the performance differs between stock and what we just did here. Okay, so I have a power meter next to the laptop in different configurations. At stock, you can see uh, the watts that are being pulled from the wall in that configuration. Uh, that's stock. Bottom right, we have the undervolted, which we just applied. Uh, with also the corresponding power. And these are timed up at the exact same time so you can see the power difference. Now on the bottom left, I have a bonus set up, undervolt plus power cap, which I'll talk about at the end. But you can see it uses substantially less power, uh, but you also see that it also scores almost as high as this, the, the undervolted. So the stock is just stock, undervolted is maximum performance through undervolting, and undervolting plus power cap is some limits on power that uh, are still quite a bit better than stock, but you can see massive power savings. So uh, we'll go ahead and skip to the end of the benchmark so you can see what that looks like and how the scores played out. Okay, so uh, we ended up the stock configuration, 3252, uh, but the interval to configuration gave a 38.94, a full 20% in performance. And you can see that both the minimum frame rate, the average, and the max were much higher than the stock configuration, even though it pulled about 10 watts less. So it's pretty plain to see that we, we've got a really big uptick in performance here. And the majority of that's due to the fact that the CPU can boost higher and the GPU also can boost higher for the same amount of watts that it's putting out. Um, just a quick note on that undervolting plus capping the power, it got a score of 3817, so very close to the undervolted score, but note that it on average pulled 71 watts instead of 81 watts. That's a full 20 watts lower than the stock configuration, <clears throat> despite performing almost as high as the maximum performance that we could get out of the machine. So I'll talk about that a little bit later, but for now, uh, we've kind of covered, here's what you do to get the performance gains, and this is the end of the quick and dirty section. So you've been able to see how to maximize the performance of your notebook through undervolting, and now we're going to get in and talk about all the different presets of the applications, how to install them, how to make them run with startup at Windows. So if you want to stick around for that, that will be a pretty long section. Um, but uh, if you, that's all you're going to stick around with us for today, thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe. And we'll get into the detailed section of how all this works, why all this works. And um, stay tuned. Let's move into it. Okay, so let's talk about the software and how to install it. So first, throttle stop. Just go to Google. 
type in throttle stop there's a link in the description but uh best place to download is here at uh, tech power up you'll go ahead and download that there and then as far as msi afterburner just type that into google um, here's msi afterburner 4.6.2 just go here download it and um, you've got your downloads here here's throttle stop so what i like to do is go into the C drive and I'll create a folder called TS. This makes it a little easier to know where it is and you extract all the files into here. Now you may have a problem when you first try to run it and it will say MS runtime missing. That's sometimes a problem because uh, you may not have some visual C runtimes involved, uh, installed. Uh, so what you wanna do is look for this visual C runtimes all in one. And that I found is a good package um run times all in one right here that's also a tech power up and someone's compiled everything you could would possibly need so you download that file it looks like this just right click it click extract all and that will give you this folder and just run this batch file as an administrator and that will install everything you need and then your throttle stop will run just fine so uh, once you run it for the first time, I'll go ahead and do that so you can see. We'll go in the throttle stop folder. And we'll run it. There we go. And we are in. So that's throttle stop. Um, let's talk very briefly with MSI Afterburner. So you'll have this, this uh, zip file here. You'll extract it. And it actually has an installation um, application so you'll double click that and run it and it also includes something called Riva Tuner. Now if you want to be doing uh, basically on-screen display things you can choose to install Riva Tuner but that is not necessary. So you'll run that it will install and it will actually give you a shortcut on the desktop that looks like this. So let's open up both of those applications. That gets you everything you need to do the undervolting. So that's that's the software setup portion. Um, we'll talk about how to make these run with Windows. So first of all, let's look at MSI Afterburner. So you can start by clicking this button, start with Windows, and you can also tell it to start minimize. If you do that, it will automatically load up with Windows and load your profile. And we'll talk profiles in just a second. Um, but actually, yeah, let's go ahead and, and talk, it, talk about it now. So after you have hit Control F to run your scan, uh, in the voltage frequency curve editor and you've run it here after you apply that curve you can click this save button and then choose where it goes in a particular profile so if I wanted that to be profile 3 that way you can save it in place and you can load it whenever you want if you want to get back to stock settings because you've messed something up just hit this reset button um, and then that sets everything back to stock and you're not going to have any issues. Uh, but I'm going to load my performance profile again. So, uh, actually, I want that at a thousand. Okay, so let's talk really quickly about the GPU and why undervolting works. Why, why does it increase performance? So this window represents, the red line is the stock curve, and then you have uh, where your scan kind of put the frequency. Now you can see it's stock, uh, say you wanted to operate at uh, 1500 megahertz. Under the normal curve, the GPU would choose to apply uh, 0.750 millivolts, or sorry, 750 millivolts to get to 1500. Where under the new curve, to get to 1500, it only is going to give the GPU 700 millivolts. So 50 millivolts less at the same clock. So as long as your GPU can operate stably and not commit errors, um, you can actually give it less voltage. And there's actually, and I should touch on this earlier probably, but there's very little risk here in terms of damaging your hardware. People are like, oh, 
I'm I'm undervolting, so everything's overclocking. So I might use more power. But as you saw with the power draw in that visual setup, we're using less power. Less power means less heat. And that actually means you're increasing the longevity of your system by doing this. So that's good to see. So um, that, that's the relationship between the voltage, which is the x-axis, and the frequency, which is the y-axis. So the more you push the um, megahertz at a particular voltage level, uh, the more power you're going to have with, with, the more graphical punch you're going to have with less power used. It just, if you set it too high, your GPU is going to error out and you're going to have, you know, crashing, blue screens, things like that. But the OC scanner is a great tool. You don't even have, you can manipulate all of these manually, but you don't have to do that. It's so easy to do with the OC scanner. Just click it, scan, let it apply a voltage curve and then you can test it if you want, then you're done and you just apply it and you're good to go. Uh, let's talk memory clock really quickly. So uh, you may want to look into what type of, if you're using a higher performance GPU, like a 2060 or 2070 on a laptop, uh, it may be using GDDR6 and I don't offhand know through personal experience how much memory clock bonus you would like to apply. Um, but in general, these, these 1650 GPUs are very conservative by default. You use that 3500 default um, is really pretty conservative. And there's lots of uh, general purpose 1650s uh, that already come stock with 4.5 uh, gigahertz applied at, at the memory frequency. So that's really not a re stretch for it to get that. I've actually played with this up to uh, 4700 and I haven't crashed yet. Uh, basically, you, this doesn't tend to crash the PC as much. It maybe introduces artifacts in the textures and you'll be seeing strange things if you go too high on this. But for the most part, uh, I would say 4,500 is even, you know, fairly conservative, but with a decent amount of performance. So stick to that. One other thing to note here is it's going to say curve. Um, if it's not using, that's when you're using your control F menu, that is, that's what that means is you've applied that curve. Normally, if you're playing with this, uh, it's going to show, Hey, I'm just automatically going to apply this, this core clock, uh, above and beyond where it would normally be. Uh, so don't don't worry that that says curve. It should say curve if you've done it correctly, because I have to keep setting my memory frequency. I'm going to save that profile. So if I've set that, I know that's what I want my memory profile to be. I'm going to hit save, and I'm going to hit 5 again. So um, you noticed I was talking about power capping. Uh, We'll touch on one more thing in Afterburner when we talk about power capping, but for now, let's talk about CPU undervolting and the throttle stop menus. So, uh, throttle stop is pretty straightforward, although there are lots of uh, acronyms that are kind of hard to understand. Uh, so let's just go through them really quickly. Um, you have package power, which is represented here. So you can see right now the the CPU is pulling 21 watts as we're recording and kind of sitting here idle at the desktop. Um, in here, we talked about the voltage uh, regulator. And the only thing you'd really want to touch in here is your CPU core, CPU cache. And if you want, you can actually get in here and reduce your Intel GPU uh, by, you know, 30 or so. You could play around with that, see what's stable, and that will save a little bit, but since we have the NVIDIA GPU in there, it's not doing a whole lot uh, by having that undervolted. So let's click OK there. The other major thing that you want to, to know in here is TPL. So this is the turbo power limits, and this is what it's set to at stock. So 65 long and 107 short. So what that means is this CPU is actually configured, and the BIOS may be restricting it more than what these values say, 
but it says, hey, if you're, if within 28 seconds, I'm gonna let you use 107 watts, and then by the end of that 28 seconds, it's gonna bump down to 65 watts. So what that means is, um, uh, you can, uh, well, you can adjust these, and I will show you how that works in a minute, but let's talk about what happens when we, when we undervolt. So you can see right now, kind of at stock, we're at 1.2, but if I adjust the voltage on the CPU core and set it back to, to the normal value, watch that jump up. Now it's at almost 1.3. So voltage equals power. In fact, I just heard the fan spin up when I did that. So by reducing the, the volts going through, as long as it can sustain the same clock without throwing errors or blue screens, uh, when you reduce that voltage, you reduce heat. And when you reduce heat, your watts here are less. So if you have full voltage and you try to run something like this benchmark with 12 threads, it's gonna go straight to 65 plus watts and only get a clock speed of 3.7 there. Um, but what you can do is, uh, well, I guess what I'm saying is, if we weren't undervolted when we run this, let's go ahead and run this again. So we're running this benchmark, we're able to maintain uh, 3.6, 3.5, 3.6. Now, if I were to reverse, I'm going to stop that. And if I were to set the voltage back to stock, we would see, set that back to stock, and the CPU cache back to stock. You'll see that it's not able to maintain the same clock speeds that it was able to do before. So look at that. Now we're pulling roughly the same amount of watts, but it's throttled way down to 3.2. So be, so undervolted, we're able to sustain a 3.6, 3.7 gigahertz. Whoop, I just closed it. But so as I was saying, when you're undervolted, you can actually sustain a higher clock speed as long as everything remains stable, right? So you can see it's stock. The fans are spinning like crazy. We're only getting 3.2, where if we undervolt it, all of a sudden we've got more headroom and we can bump up the clock speed to a higher level. So that's what undervolting does for you. It allows your computer to be more efficient, operate a higher frequency using less watts, which is less heat. So let's talk one more thing. Um, there's a limits button. This will tell you why uh, a CPU might be limited. It could be because of thermals. It could be because the PL2 has been exceeded. The PL2 is related to um, how long it can stay in these short and long power maxes. So um, that is, that's our throttle stop explained. Um, really great program. The CLR clears your max temp. So if you're testing, you can kind of clear that and see what the max temp ends up being as you're playing around with different scenarios. So um, Let's talk about what you need to do to make throttle stop start with Windows. Now I found the best way to do that is with task, not task manager, task scheduler. And what you're gonna do is you're going to click create basic task. And we're, I'm gonna call it TS for throttle stop. And the trigger is gonna be when you log in and you're gonna start a program. And that program, we're gonna browse, we're gonna to go to the C drive, we're gonna to go to throttle stop, and we're gonna select it there. And we're gonna say next, and we're gonna click open the properties dialog, so we can change some other advanced settings here. 
and we're going to say run only when the user is logged in. We're going to say run with the highest privileges. And we're also going to say we don't want to stop if the, it's on battery power. That doesn't matter. And we don't care about stopping the task. And allow it to run on demand. Say OK. And now throttle stop will boot every single time that you log into your computer or reboot it. And the other thing you might want to do in combination with that is to click this options button. And you can also say start minimized. And that way when your computer reboots, it will come up, it will be here in the taskbar and you don't have to worry about it and your undervolt will apply. So really get great uh, application there. A little hard to get working to boot with Windows, but we've done it and now we're set up. Okay, so let's talk about what I did to power cap the machine. So you'll, you know that when I power capped it, we went from using 90 plus watts it stopped to using about 70 watts, which means the fans run less, you save power, you are actually getting really close performance to just plain underclocked. So let me show you how that works because you can power cap both the GPU and the CPU. So let's first do the CPU. So if we go over to TPL and click on that, how I was able to achieve my results was to set this to 15 watts. So oh, solely 15 watts and 20 watts on the short boost power max. So once you set that, you can see, boom, this is not going to go higher than 15 watts. And <laughs> even if I run a benchmark, so if I run that same benchmark that was pulling 60 watts, um, it's limiting that down to uh, the the wattage that I put in before. So you can see, boom, it's it's capped. Um, so if you set that, and you have to remember to unset it if you need that extra performance. Uh, so if you've set that, just remember what your original values were. For this particular laptop, it was 65 and 107. But I've seen other laptops with the exact same processor that have been set to um, 45 long and 90 short. So it really depends what, what's been set up for your particular hardware. So be sure to write that down and remember what it was before you go changing it and don't, and don't know how to get back to stock. Now you can always reinstall and, and that but and reboot the machine and you'll be back to normal. But if you want to use your same instance of throttle stop, just remember to um, what your original values were. Okay, so we've set that to 15, we set that to 20. So now let's come over to here. Now this particular laptop has a 1650 max Q, which means it's limited to supposedly 35 watts, but it's actually on this machine, I've noticed that it actually lets it run up to 40 watts. Um, so how do you cap that? You know, it, people talk about undervolting their machine to make it run cooler. You can do that. Here's how, here's how you do it. So we've already let our memory clock be a thousand. That's great. Leave that memory bandwidth available. We've set a curve. So let's go back to that curve. So all you need to do to cap your machine is look at this curve here. So this is at one volt. One volt will let it boost all the way to uh, about 2000 megahertz. So what if we don't want to operate at one volt? What if we say, hey, we don't want, we don't want this machine to go higher than 700 millivolts. So all you do is click that little button there and you're going to hit control L, control L, and that will give you a yellow line. That yellow line lets you cap the voltage. So we're literally saying, don't let the GPU exceed 700 millivolts. And once you've done that, hit apply. 
and I'm going to save that as my number one profile. We've just capped the GPU. So if you want to see that again, we're hitting Control F. You've got your frequency curve that you've already scanned for. You're going to select the first dot, hit Control L to cap your voltage at the level you want it. So look along this X axis. If you want to say, hey, I'm fine with the with it hitting one volt because I'm I want to hit that power budget, select this line or this button and say control L there. That's where I want my limit to be. But uh, what I found is on this max Q where it can't go higher than 40 watts anyways, if you cap that at 700 millivolts, it's right where it's bumping up with that 40 watt limit and just a little bit below it. So we're actually saving power by capping it at, at 700 millivolts. And you saw that on we our average was almost exactly the same, but our peak frames rate was not as high. Now it may be it may seem unintuitive to say, well, when I cap it at 700 millivolts, I'm not exceeding 1500 megahertz. But what happens is when you cap it to that rate, you actually end up getting very consistent frames. We're used to bursty workloads where performance goes up and down, up and down, up and down, where by capping it, you're basically saying this, this GPU is just going to sit there at the same frequency and give very consistent frames um, throughout the play session. And it actually makes it so your average frame rate is not too bad because sometimes it boosts and then it has to fall back down below 1500 because it used too much of the power budget and it kind of fights itself up and down, up and down. If, you're, if your goal is pure performance, that's actually good. But if your goal is efficiency, by capping this at 700 millivolts, you're not going to exceed. You're going to bump up with that 40 watt limit, but a lot of the time you're going to be around 35 watts instead of 40 which means you're just reducing uh, that much more voltage. So you're basically restricting your CPU down to 15 to 20 watts and your GPU down to 35 to 40 watts. And what that means is this, this computer is basically sipping power using uh, anywhere from 65 to 70 watts instead of 95 to 100 watts and suddenly you've got way better battery life if you're operating <laughs> without being plugged in, which isn't smart for a gaming laptop, by the way. But your temperature is super low. Your fans run slower. Your hands aren't burning when you put your hand <laughs> put your hands up there on the the keyboard. So uh, there is a case to be had for capping the power of your machine, and that's how you do it. You cap your voltage on the GPU. You cap your wattage on the CPU and suddenly uh, you're doing pretty well for yourself. It all depends what your goals are. If you just want performance, follow the short guide, which is like, hey, just do this, click these buttons and you're good to go. So anyways, I hope that that long session is useful for a lot of you um, to know how to actually make this work and why it works. So anyways, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe. Uh, lots of great videos coming up, uh, especially about this Lenovo C940 15 inch. And I really appreciate uh, all the viewers and we'll see you next time.